everybody should start with walking. You're going to get a lot of, lot of uh, discussion on this topic. There's not a lot of agreement, but I can tell you what I've observed in my medical practice. The diabetes cure, the hypertension cure, the obesity cure, all kicking at 30 minutes. So if you put in your 30 minutes of walking a day, as far as exercise as a contributor to your well-being, you've pretty much done it. Now you have to do other things to, to augment that or to supplement that. And these different things, do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and they have a multiplier effect. So you do a little bit of several things, and you get big results. But if you do a lot of getting one thing, the results can be disappointing. Uh, no, I don't think that, I personally don't think that that's the same as walking. Walking, you get fresh air. Walking, um, your body is putting its, its full weight. You're working on your, on your balance. Walking, you strengthen a lot of muscles in your abdomen, your back, uh, your lower end. So walking, so it's, a, it's a different um, thing. So that is my recommendation, and that's only based on observation. Like, I'm um, training a facility for fasting, and they recommend at least a full hour every day of strenuous exercise, half hour of walking, blah, 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 blah. So you get through your exercise piece, my God, there goes your job. So um, it's not really practical. For most of us, all we want is a healthy body that can do the things we assign to it. Whether that's mountain climbing, whether that's doing laundry, whether it's watching a movie, just, we just want to do the things that give us pleasure and enjoy our lives. That goal in mind, um, walking half an hour a day. Okay, so keeping it off, what do you have to do? Again, we have a whole CD of weight loss that goes over all this in great detail, but you've got to convince yourself. Either you're going to fast um, for one day, every week, every other week, or whatever you need to. Some ladies find that as soon as that scale hits five pounds over their benchmark, whatever the target weight is, they get five pounds over, okay, that's it. Vegetables only until it gets back down. It may take a day, two days, three days, it comes right back down. Okay, now they can go back to eating what they want. Um, other women um, decide they start doing enemas, they do the enemas, that weight comes right off, okay, right, they stop their enemas, they're okay. So you need a plan. And you need a plan to intervene when that weight creeps up about five pounds over whatever mark you pick when you select it. This is once you've reached your goal, whatever it is, You've got to stay vigilant. You've got to get on that scale, uh, whatever it is. Some people, some ladies, at one day, they can go to a party and gain 10 pounds. Well, that's, that's the lady who needs to weigh every day. Some women, their weight's pretty steady. This kind of just drifts up, drifts up, drifts up. So you don't think I'd buy the next size up. If you're that kind of lady, maybe you can weigh once a week. When you see getting out of hand, you can kind of dip it below. But that's the secret to weight management. Um, you need to weigh yourself periodically and get that weight in your hand. Now, some people, Maybe it's not anybody here, but some people have a problem with too little weight. And those are the same thing. Just weigh yourself periodically. When that weight's tapering off, just take action. Generally, it's eating cooked brown rice, cooked potatoes, and that will bring that quick weight right back up to where you want to be, and then you just keep working along. But whatever your weight is, you take it, you do what you need to do to get down to it, and then there's all kinds of things when the weight loss can even tell you. And then once you get to that target weight, whatever it is, you adjust it within five pounds either way. You stay pretty close to it. And that's the secret weight management. We all focus on the losing part. Lose it, lose it, lose it, lose it, lose it. And that's why everyone gains their weight back. Because there's never a maintenance program. No, there's animals being safe There's animals, there's animals, there's animals, and there's animals. Um, so what I've done is devise animals that's extremely it doesn't use tap water, she's not putting parasites up your butt. It doesn't use large volumes, she's not going to rupture your intestines. It's not too hot, so it's not going to burn you or harm you. So all the problems with enemas have been addressed. So the volume has been addressed, um, the temperature has been addressed, the type of water has been addressed, the frequency. And I go into great detail about enemas and how to do them safely. And another problem with enemas, um, and nothing said chronic, is the people who use a lot of pressure to force the water in. I recommend gravity enemas, not, no forcing at all, just let the water flow. So uh, yes, enemas can be harmful, and doctors used to kill people with enemas, if you can imagine. They used to put near, boil, near boiling water up there. They call them three H enemas, high, hot, hell of a lot. So they put in too much water, and it was too hot, and it was too high, and people died. And I was taught in medical school, don't ever do an enema on anyone, because it'll kill them. Well, then I looked 
into it more and start talking to old time nurses and all my gosh. And they come with kind of animals with views, and of course they kill anybody. But um, there are animals that can be done, they're extremely safe, even comfortable. And, and I talk about those in the beginning, so that's, that's important to know. Okay, wait a minute. Heart disease, okay, heart disease. So who gets heart disease? Anyone volunteer who gets heart disease? Everybody gets heart disease, that's right. Everyone, what do you need to get heart disease? There you go.